inside this huge hall is a big surprise and I can't wait to show you. Hey guys, B Snappy here. Look at this aircraft behind me. It is an absolute monster. We're here at the Motap Museum in Auckland, New Zealand. And with us today, we've got Andrew. So Andrew, tell us a bit about what aircraft this is and a bit about the history of it. Okay. So this is our short Sunderland and Mark V flying boat. Um, the wheels on it aren't actually part of the airframe. They're basically used to haul it out of water for maintenance purposes. Um, they were originally built as an aircraft uh, in Britain in response to the uh, German uh, submarine threat. So these were designed primarily to hunt down the German U-boats uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. Although later on in the war, they actually expanded their operations to hunting down Japanese submarines in the Pacific. At the moment, there's four that are intact and two that are wreckage, uh, that are wrecks at the moment. So there's about six of them left. And how do you end up with this aircraft right here? So this aircraft was actually uh, donated to us by the Royal New Zealand Air Force um, post-war because New Zealand operated them mainly as search and rescue aircraft. So that was shortly after their retirement in 1966 when they were replaced by the P3 Orions. So what sort of motors is this plane actually running? So these are running on four Pratt & Whitney Wasp engines. They're about 15, 1600 horsepower. So here in New Zealand, where did they land and take off? Where was the base for these aircraft? Um, the primary base for these things was out of Hobsonville. And many of the old hangars and barracks are actually still in Hobsonville today. Their overseas base, though, was actually in uh, La Fala Bay in Suva. Can you point out some main features of the aircraft? Yes, of course. One of the main features that, is that we actually have on this particular Sunderland is actually the, um, the bomb rack located underneath the wing. So the, one of the... Um, the interesting things with this is that the bomb rack is actually designed to roll in and out um, from the from the inside of the fuselage. There's actually one on each wing, um, yep. but we've got this one opened up in that so you can actually see how the mechanism operates. Also underneath each wing, um, as part of its anti-submarine patro uh, patrol mission, is the radar station. Yeah. Um, so normally that would actually be painted over white to actually conceal the position of the radar. Um, but we've got this uh, transparent so that you can actually see the uh, radar dish itself. Um, like with the with the bomb racks, there's one under each wing. So can you tell us a little bit about the machine guns on this base? So those would have actually only been 7.7 millimeter machine guns, so only rifle caliber ammunition. They actually had um, additional machine guns uh, sticking out of some of the porthole windows. Usually anywhere between 7.7 millimeter to 50 caliber machine guns. But on this particular one, um, they would have had a machine gun turret in the front with the tw with two 7.7 millimeter guns, an upper turret again um, with 7.7 millimeters, and then a tail turret with the same armament. The hull has a very specific shape. Mm -hmm. Why is it shaped like this? So the reason why it's actually shaped like the, uh, shaped like this is because it's designed to actually be hydrodynamic. Yeah. Um, so it's shaped like the underside is shaped like the keel of a boat. Mm -hmm to allow it to actually basically push itself through the water. So like getting up on the plane on a boat? Basically, yeah. What is the takeoff distance for an airplane like this? It depended on the weather conditions because um, if you were operating armor waters, it would take a bit longer, like maybe about a kilometer yep. of distance. Whereas if you, were, um, if you had more rougher waters, it would probably be around about half that distance. You can see where the shape of the hull changes just right here. And this has a 34 metre wingspan, which is absolutely huge. And it weighs 16 tonnes. Like and subscribe and check this video out right here.